welcome to behold he comes a god giving message to the whole world at this time and when i say the whole world i'm talking about the listening world the world that has the ears to hear and the wisdom to react positively to what the Lord is saying. All over us, all around us at this time, when you look into the news, you know that all the events that have been scheduled, that have been prophesied to happen before the coming of the Lord, has already happened. So, we are just at the mercies of God right now. And we don't know how long the masses may last. That's why we don't take it for granted, please. Please don't wave this message away. Please don't turn it down. Please don't shut down. Listen and take action. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you love us. No wonder the Bible says, for God so loved the world. For the love you love us, you still send your only begotten son. The Bible says that you that have that that spared not your only begotten son. How will you not with him Give us all things. You are so loving, so kind, so wonderful. Ah, oh Lord, we thank you. That even now, the end has not come. Just because of your long suffering, just because of your love, you do not want us to perish. You don't want anybody to go to hell. Ah, oh Lord, thank you for this love. Be exalted, Lord, forever and ever in Jesus. Please help us. Help us to be obedient. Help us to hear you, to listen. Help us to do what you want us to do. Help us to get prepared. So that when the time comes, you will take the glory of our life. Thank you, Lord. Be exalted forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Welcome back. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. And I want you to know that God loves you. And that's why he has led you one way or the other to get on this link and on this message. And I believe it's going to bless you because nothing happens just for the fun of it with God. When God does anything, it is perfect. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be removed from it. That he made you to turn in and listen to this message. It is because he has a purpose for your life. Please pay attention. Because God is ready to bless you. We have been on this series for some time. And we started another series. Under the series, it's like a sub-series. We call it before he comes. And we started learning some of these important events that will happen. And the very first one that we are expecting that can happen, even as I'm talking right now, is rapture. The rapture. So in our, like two weeks ago, we, we been discussing about rapture. And we're still going to discuss rapture today. But last week, uh, if you if you are able to listen to last week edition, um, we ended up with a particular passage in the scripture that we did not look at at that time, but I said we were going to look at today. Our anchor verse has been Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. The seven a, the very first part of it said, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. And when you look at Matthew chapter 24, 
verse 30. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. It's also backing up it. And right there, it was Jesus himself that was prophesying is coming back. Let us look at it. Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The Son of Man, Jesus, is coming back. He's coming back powerfully. He's coming back gloriously. He's coming to lay his feet again upon the earth. This time around, not as a Savior who is going about seeking who is lost and to save them. But this time around, it's going to be a judge. One who will sit down and judge the world and rule the world. He's coming back. That is the second coming. And that's our anchor passage. But now we are talking about before he comes. And like I said last week, we ended up with a, a passage. I want us to look at that passage before I go further to what we have today. Uh, you know it's a series, and so I mean, you just need to uh, follow up because it's a continuous topic and subject that you don't want to miss any one of them. And yet, uh, we don't want to really take our time in this uh, I mean, time that we just come together. We just want to spend just like 15, 20 minutes and go. So God bless you in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 11 to verse 16 is a very strong passage that really uh, appealed to me when I first got born again. I first know the Lord and I started growing in the Lord. This is one of the passages that, I mean, it, it really appealed to my heart. It really gave me some kind of caution to always caution myself and make sure that I, I am just doing what is right every moment. I don't do what is right every moment, but I try. <laughs> because as soon as I find out that, I, as soon as I remember this passage, quickly, I retrace my step and I, and I amend it and I correct it and I continue walking right with the Lord. It has been a kind of guide, a kind of caution for me in my Christian life. I want you to listen to it. Ezekiel. 33. Because last week we were talking about those that will be raptured. Those who are those that be that be caught up into the sky. What kind of people Jesus was coming for? This was, that was what we discussed last week. Now look at this, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33. We will read from verse 11 to verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 33. We will read from verse 11 to verse 16. Let us listen to what King James Version says. Say unto them, As I live, said the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye Turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Verse 12. Therefore, 
thou son of man, say unto the children of the people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turn from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he had committed, he shall die for it. Verse 14, again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again what he had robbed, Walk in the status of life without committing iniquity, <laughs> he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him. He had done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely leave. Wow. What a powerful passage. You know what that means? It is what the rapture meets you doing that will be used to judge you. If the rapture sounds right now, and you are doing evil, you are lying, fornicating, you are in anger, you are in unforgiving uh, spirit, and all this evil thing. Even if you are a pastor, even if you are a minister, even if you are a miracle worker, how many have been healed through you, many have been saved through you, many have been, have been delivered through you. <laughs> From this passage, it is clear that all your righteousness will be forgotten, will not be mentioned on the day, on the time of your iniquity. <laughs> that is so, so, so serious. And he said, the sinner, the wicked, the one that you say is going to go to hell, if the rapture comes and that sinner is met, give it, I mean, surrendering his life to Jesus and, I mean, walking right, doing what is right, what is good, such a sinner that is doing, that is in righteousness at the time of rapture, all his sins, all his iniquities, all his atrocities, all those things he has done that is so devilish will not be mentioned at the time of his righteousness. Ah, that's why I'm appealing to everyone that have not given his life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus now. The Bible says all your iniquity, all your atrocity, evil thing you have done before will not be mentioned if you continue in righteousness in Jesus Christ. All believers, all workers in the church, all churchgoers who are filled with self-righteousness at the time of the rapture, your self-righteousness will not help you. That is serious. 
that is serious. Every wise person, every wise man, woman, everybody that is wise, need to take that into serious thought, serious con consideration. I did long time ago. I never forgot this passage. Right from the first time that I heard about it, that I read it, I said, wow, Lord have mercy on me. We need to get ready. Rapture is just by the, by the door. Rapture is just around the corner. Rapture can happen right now. Please do not, do not, do not be little. Do not, do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. The Lord will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. If rapture doesn't come, death can come. And so, what do we need to do? We need to get ourselves ready. We need to know Jesus, surrender our life to Jesus, and let him take over your life. And then continue reading the Bible, praying through, meditating the, in the Bible, preaching the word, let people around you know you got a new faith. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your co-workers, tell your schoolmates, tell your business customers. Tell those who, are, who follow you up on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, social media. Let them know you are a child of God now. And tell them also to give their love to Jesus. The end is nearer, closer than, than you expect. Don't forget, Jesus may come, death may come. Both of them come. On our, on our ears, get ready, and God will help you in Jesus' name. In Ezekiel chapter 33, in that verse 11, verse 12, he said he, he doesn't have pleasure in the death of the wicked. Who is the wicked? The sinner who refused to give his life to Jesus. That is what he said. He said that he is not willing for you to die. I tell you, God is long-suffering. We have said that in one of the series we had before. God is long-suffering. Just because of me and you waiting that we will just get it right and we'll be able to make it to his kingdom. Please give your life to Jesus. It is well with you. I'll round up right now and uh, I pray that God Almighty will keep us if Jesus tarries to come, tarries to come, and we are still alive next week, we will meet in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Stay safe and stay blessed in Jesus' name.